Christ loved us and washed us clean in our sins by our time, and made us into a kingdom, priests of the God of our Father. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the kingdom of the Holy Spirit, and with you all. And with your spirit, we see these masks of the Imago of the Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You are sent to heal the country of heart. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners to Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father who received for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Now, my God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to our last one. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> o God, who by the glorification of your Christ and the light of the Holy Spirit have unlocked for us the gates of eternity, grant, we pray, that partaking of so great a gift, our devotion may grow deeper and our faith be strengthened. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. One God forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The tribunal who had arrested Paul was sent him to Caesarea to be tried by Felix the governor. After two years had passed, Felix was succeeded by Portius Festus. And since he wanted to grant the Jews a favor, Felix left Paul in prison. King Agrippa and Bernice arrived in Caesarea to welcome Festus. Since they were staying there several days, Festus laid Paul's case before the king, saying, There is a man here who was left in prison by Felix. When I was in Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews informed me about him and asked for a sentence against him. I told them that it was not the custom of the Romans to hand over anyone before the accused had met the accusers face to face, and had been given an opportunity to make a defense against the charge. So when they met here, I lost no time, but on the next day I took my seat in our tribunal and ordered the man to be brought. When the accusers stood up, they did not charge them with any of the crimes that I was expecting. Instead, they had certain points of disagreement with him about their own religion and about a certain Jesus who had died, but whom Paul asserted to be alive. Since I was at a loss how to investigate these questions, I asked whether he wished to go to Jerusalem and be tried there on his charges. But when Paul had appealed to be kept in custody for the decision of his imperial majesty, I ordered him to be held until I could send him to the end. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord has set his throne in heaven. The Lord has set his throne in heaven. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his that vast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgressions from us. And the Lord has set his throne in heaven. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, O you, his angels. You might be ones who do his bidding, obedient to his spoken word. The Lord will set his throne in my hand. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel of the Holy John. Jesus showed himself to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. And when they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Peter said to Jesus, Yes, Lord, 
you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time, Jesus said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. Jesus said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because Jesus said to him the third time, Do you love me? And Peter said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands, and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. After this, Jesus said to him, Follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The question sometimes comes, how did Rome become the center of the church? How does this seat end up there, not Jerusalem, or not Bethlehem, not Nazareth, not one of those places where Jesus had been? Well, today in the scriptures, we have the indications of why it was meant to be that way. We have Paul getting ready to go on trial for the emperor. Where? In Rome. And it is Rome that Paul will continue to testify about Jesus Christ, continue to testify that Jesus is the Son of the living God, and continue to testify that he suffered and died for our sins, and that he is raised from the dead. In our Gospel, we have Jesus asking Peter three times if he loved him. And each time Peter answered yes, Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep, feed my lambs, feed my sheep. When we go back through the scriptures, we always see that the relationship often between God and the Jewish people was that of shepherd and sheep. And so God was always seen as a good shepherd. And so we have here Jesus asking Peter these questions and giving him that command to feed his sheep, to tend his sheep, and then follow me is indicating that Jesus is telling Peter that you are the one that I choose to continue my mission as the head of my church here on earth. And he also indicates to Peter that he was going to undergo death for the glorification of God. And he says that he'll be led to where he would rather not go. Now, as we know from later scriptures and as we know from history, Peter also ended up in Rome, and that is where he was put to death. So we have Peter and Paul both in Rome. We have Peter and Paul both martyred in Rome. Peter is seen the apostle of the apostles. Paul is seen the apostle for the Gentiles. So the two great apostles of the church that Jesus himself chose find themselves in Rome. And thus we have the head of the church in Rome. Her seed is centered there. Now, of course, at the time, that was the center of the world. That was where the emperor was, and the emperor pretty much ran the world as they knew it. And so it being the center of the world, it was the place where all the news dug from, where all the historians were, it was the place where the message of Jesus was to be recorded. And so for ourselves, we ask, you know, how much faith did we put in Jesus' choices, the choices of the ones that he has to go and continue to be shepherds for his flock, and how much do we listen to their direction? How much do we have faith that they are guided by the Holy Spirit and will not lead us astray? And finally, how much are we willing to turn to Jesus and offer, I love you, 
for the number of times that we have sinned against him, the number of times that we have denied him, as Peter had denied him three times, and answers our love you three times. How often are we ready to turn, to repent, and to tell Christ, yes, I love you. And always keep in mind that in our weakness, our love is what it is, but Christ receives it and can do great things with it, as we saw he did it with Peter and Paul. Dear brothers and sisters, filled with pastoral joy, let us pray more earnestly to God that He who graciously listened to prayers and supplications of His beloved Son may now be pleased to look upon us in our wilderness. For the shepherds of our souls, that they may have the strength to govern wisely the flock entrusted to them by the good shepherd, let us pray to them. Lord, for the whole world, that it may truly know the peace given by Christ, let us pray to the Lord. For our brothers and sisters who suffer, that their sorrow may be turned to gladness, which no one can take from them, let us pray to the Lord. For our own community, that it may bear witness with great confidence to the resurrection of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. For the prayers that remain in the seat of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord and united in prayer with our Holy Mother, we pray. Hail Mary, Lord of the Lord, 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 O oh God, who know that our life in this present age is subject to suffering and need, hear the desires of those who cry to you, and receive the prayers of those who believe you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer. Through the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us a bread of life. Blessed be the Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine and the offering, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual bread.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look mercifully, O Lord, we pray, upon the sacrificial gifts of your people, and that they may become acceptable to you, that the coming of the Holy Spirit cleanse our conscience. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and very rare to give you thanks to the Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascending to the highest heavens as the angels gazed in one world. Mediator between God and man, judge of the world and Lord of hosts, he ascended, not to distance himself from our lowly state, but that we, his members, might be confident of following where he, our head and founder, has gone before. Therefore, overcome the past of joy, every land, every people exalts in the praise. Even the heavenly powers of the angelic hosts sing together in the name of your glory as they acclaim. O Lord, O Lord, O Lord, O Lord, O In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you, and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. <laughs> The mystery of faith. We proclaim to an end the Lord and profess the resurrection until the end of the man. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and love of Christ, we may be gathered in one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Christian, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them with the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. With the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co heirs with your life, and may praise and glorify you, through your Son, Jesus Christ.
Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. Amen. Amen. By the Savior's command and form and divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, our Lord, thy Deliver us, Lord, we pray for there to be gracious to grant peace in our days, done by the help of your mercy. We may be always free from sin and sick from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace on you, my peace on you. Look God on our sins and on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Bless the those called to the supper of the Lamb. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will teach you all truth, says the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Body 
body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Amen. Body of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whose mysteries we are cleansed and nourished, grant, we pray, that this banquet which you give us may bring everlasting life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. Now may God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, Mass is in. Thank you. Thank you.